It is 4.30 on WKYT this morning. Police say an arrest has been made in Lexington's latest homicide case, and we'll have the details coming up next. UK Health Services will be hosting a clinic today to offer students and staff to get vaccinations in the wake of the mumps virus on campus. And UK got back to winning last night. A look at the Cats' easy victory just ahead this morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you and welcome in. Good to have you with us on this Wednesday. We're in the middle of the week. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. Let's get a look at what's happening with the weather. It's getting interesting out there, Mike. It is a first alert severe weather day as we go straight to our meteorologist on duty. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, we're looking at a widespread rain out and about. Some heavy downpours sure. here and there, too. But what you're going to be seeing here in just the next few hours are some thunderstorms rolling on in. Now, are we expecting widespread severe weather? Absolutely not. Could we get an isolated cell? That's possible over toward the east. That's the best likelihood of seeing that. But for the most part, this is just going to be a soggy, wet day. There's your system. It's going to be barreling on through as we move through your day. And once that happens, look on the backside. There's your snow. I'm going to show you when that snow moves on in and how much we're expecting now coming up. All right, see you in a minute with the details. And you this morning, police have made an arrest following a deadly shooting outside of a Lexington strip club. Police say 24 year old Clarence Taylor is charged with murder. They say he was arrested late last night. Police say last Friday, Taylor shot 23 year old LaRoz Mitchell outside Camelot East on Richmond Road. Mitchell later died in a hospital. Witnesses told police Taylor shot Mitchell after the two got into a fight shortly uh, before all that. Well, today, University of Kentucky health officials have planned to vaccination clinic to try and protect people from mumps on campus. At least three mumps cases have been confirmed at UK in the last week. Others have reported also having a swollen jaw as well. WKYT's Garrett Weimer talked to UK students about the clinic and this mumps outbreak. Many students say they're not too concerned about a cluster of mumps cases on campus. I just don't think it's a big enough like thing going on right now that like I need to be concerned about it. Plus, I already have my vaccine. So, University health leaders say three students tested positive for mumps last week. Health officials here at UK say there's a chance you can still get the mumps even if you've been vaccinated. But the most effective way to prevent it is with two doses of the MMR vaccine. They're urging students now to get that second dose or even both doses if they haven't already. Students can get the shot at a walk in clinic Wednesday afternoon. Even though mumps is not a life threatening disease, it is still very contagious, and there are people out there um, that are immunocompromised, and it could be deadly to them. Scott says most students got the vaccine as kids, but they want to offer it for those who didn't. We're told the students who tested positive had been vaccinated, although symptoms are less severe if you've gotten the shot. Meanwhile, students say they're already doing what they can to stay healthy. I'm personally uh, making sure I stick around people that aren't sick if I can help it and um, just trying to keep a, a healthy diet going. I think if everyone just takes care of themselves, then it'll work out. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. And that clinic will run from 1 until 3 this afternoon. We have more information about the clinic and the cost for students. It's at WKYT.com, also on our WKYT news app. Another issue over there at UK, health officials there looking into a possible case of bacterial meningitis on campus. They say a student's now being treated at the hospital. They're still waiting on tests to see if it is, in fact, bacterial meningitis. UK says they've informed anyone who may have come in contact with the student. As a precaution, they're also giving those people medicine. Georgetown police have arrested a man who they say tried to ignite some propane tanks outside a Walgreens pharmacy. Police say 21-year-old Michael Adair has been charged with arson and wanton endangerment. They say surveillance video shows him lighting a roll of toilet paper on fire near the propane tanks on Sunday night. The tanks did not ignite and no one was injured. Adair apparently admitted to the crime while in jail yesterday. Uh... Tried blowing up Walgreens, but I didn't succeed. But I tried, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm innocent. The Scott County Sheriff says Adair told deputies he was obsessed with serial killers and with fire. Adair told us he has been bullied his entire life, and that's what led to his violent thoughts. 
A man faces charges after sheriff's deputies say he caused a disturbance in a Fayette County courtroom. Deputies say 25 year old Anthony Beard showed up at the sheriff's office for a summons. When deputies learned he had a warrant, they took him into custody. They brought him back into the courtroom, and deputies say Beard started yelling at the judge and pushed a deputy to the ground. He was charged with assault, resisting arrest, and disorderly conduct. Some Eastern Kentucky judge executives traveled to Frankfurt to ask state lawmakers to return more coal severance tax money to coal producing counties. They say without more money, they'll have to cut funding for things like fire departments, roads, and other basic services. House Speaker Greg Stumbo said coal generated less than $9 million in severance tax revenue last month, and that's the lowest return in 20 years. Who could have anticipated that rapid of a decline and a downturn? And these counties just weren't prepared for it, and there's no way that they could have been prepared for it. Eastern Kentucky officials say they want less of the coal money going into the state's general fund and more of it being returned to their counties. A Lexington veterinarian has a warner for dog owners. She says her clinic has seen a recent spike in parvo cases. Parvo is a highly contagious virus that can affect the intestines and the heart. It's often deadly for dogs. The vet says it's unusual to see so many parvo cases this time of year. WKOT's Monique Blair has some more important information to keep your dog safe. It's a big problem right now. It's hit a big number. Woodstock Clinic veterinarian Brantley Graham says the canine parvo virus is deadly about 50% of the time. And lately, her clinic, among others in the area, have seen a spike in dogs coming in, testing positive for the virus. I think we had five last week, just a really large number for this time of year. And the sick dogs are not always puppies. We had a dog that tested positive that was three years old the other day. Dr. Graham says in addition to puppies getting their parvo vaccination, it's also very important that adult dogs are also vaccinated once every year. It's important to get that annual booster. And I think a lot of people think, well, they're past the first year of AIDS, they're not going to get parvo anyway. But we're starting to see it in some adult dogs as well. The clinic started seeing the increase in the parvo virus in December, and they believe it's due to all the wet weather we've had this winter. Dr. Graham says because the ground has not reached frozen temperatures as often as it may during a typical winter, the parvo virus germs haven't had a chance to die, and they live in the ground. For a while, it's transmitted fecal oral between puppies, but they can also deposit it in the ground and it can live for months and months and months in the ground. So, if you bring your puppy to the dog park and there's been a parvo positive puppy there, he's exposed even if there are no other dogs because it's living in the ground. In Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. Vets say dogs have the best chance of surviving the par parvo virus if it is caught and treated early. Lexington-based Lexmark has announced it is planning to cut 550 jobs over the next year. But the printing and software company would not say how many, if any, of those cuts will be in Lexington. Lexmark officials say some of the jobs being cut will be moved to countries where costs are lower. Around 2,300 people work at Lexmark's Lexington headquarters. A little bit sad to see this change, a big change coming to a restaurant in Fayette Mall, Abuelos Mexican Restaurant, which is near one of the mall's entrances, closed over the weekend. The restaurant's parent company says they'll be turning it into a new concept called Oak Springs Grill. Renovations for the new restaurant will take place over the next few months. Oak Springs Grill will open in May. It'll offer burger, steaks, and ribs, among other foods. Love Mexican. I liked that place. But oh well. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> the Wildcats got back to their winning ways against Alabama last night. Uh, it was a big win. Despite being the third game in less than a week, Coach John Calipari's guys got off to a quick start and they never looked back. Uh, they led once again by a terrific guard play. UK proved to be too much for the Crimson Tide. Uh, one of the game's biggest moments came with the return of Alex Porthras. Having missed the five previous games due to injury, Porthras came in off of the bench and scored 14 points. In the end, UK simply overpowered Alabama with the final score being 78 to 53. Next up for UK is a tough road matchup against Vanderbilt and that will be this Saturday. It's always uh, tough to go play uh, down in Nashville. Yeah, definitely. WKYT this morning just getting started. It is right now 439. A little fact can do your body good coming up in today's Moms Every Day Minute. The benefit of the <laughs> And it's going to be all about the rain as we slide off through your day. Wet conditions expected, maybe possible flooding. Could we be looking at that severe weather threat? I'll talk about that and that snow coming up. Widespread rain out there early this morning. You could have some ponding there on the roads as we go through your day. 
just started about four or five hours ago, and it's really become widespread in terms of the widespread rain that is. And now you're seeing some heavier downpours here and there. You go into Boyle County and then make your way into Mercer, Harrodsburg, Salvisa, that uh, 127 corridor, and also the 27 corridor. Very wet this morning. 68 as you travel over toward Marion, Lebanon, and also Bradfordsville. Very soaked this morning. Lexington heads up. We have another 10 to 15 minutes before we start to see those heavier downpours. And that goes for Georgetown, Frankfurt, and then go off into Nicholasville. Nicholasville already starting to feel the start of that. Winchester, more than likely, it'll at least clip you, but for the most part, the bulk of that stays just to the east of you, or west of you, rather, and throughout the next, uh, I would say, 45 minutes. We have more rain on the way. That's just part of the area that I'm looking at at this moment. Heavy rain threat for today through Thursday. We're talking about heavy rain. It's right around moderate. It's uh, not extremely heavy. We're not looking to three to five inches. One to two inches is a good bet, but still, with some of those saturated grounds, that could cause isolated flooding issues. So flooding is there, but it's not too high. There's just isolated spots, meaning you could have a spot here, you could have a spot there. That's about it. But still, flooding is going to be a concern today, even though it's relatively low. High winds, we're talking 30, 40 miles per hour, maybe even in some spots around 50 miles per hour as the system barrels on through. So for the most part, we're staying out of the way of severe winds, but that's enough to maybe pull down some old tree limbs uh, of that nature, dropping them on the roads. You just got to keep that in mind. The snow threat going off into Thursday is still relatively low. I mean, one to three inches. Remember, like I said, the past couple of days, the least amount, right around a coating, the most you'll get out of this is right around three inches. But don't bypass that coating one, two, and, and then go to three. Most of us will sit right around one to two inches of snow as we track off into your evening today into the overnight hours. So that's the way it's going to be looking uh, impact wise. Let's go hour by hour. Watch this. By about 6 to 8 a.m., I'm expecting those thunderstorms to roll on through. Are we expecting any severe weather out of this? The possibility is there, but it's very, very low. I just can't rule out a stray severe cell as it rolls on through along I 75 back toward the east. Then we go through the day, pretty soggy conditions. Anywhere from 5 to about 8 p.m., you can expect that snow to take over, and then it just takes over for everybody overnight and into tomorrow. Like I was talking about, light accumulations with this one. It will have an impact on early morning commute tomorrow morning, especially those kids trying to get off to school here and there. One to two inches will cause problems. It's not a major snowstorm. We, we haven't said that all week long. We've been telling you that this is a minor uh, uh, storm system that's going to be rolling on through, but it will cause some headaches, especially there for tomorrow as we travel on through. You saw the weekend, though. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay, uh, you're right. So we just uh, kind of keep watch here the next uh, uh, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 4.45 is the time, and with all the cooking oil choices at the grocery store these days, it's uh, pretty easy to become overwhelmed. But which ones are the healthiest for your family? You've probably wondered that from time to time. In today's Mom's Everyday Minute, we take a look at the varieties. The top choice for healthy cooking oils is the gold standard, olive oil. Look for cold pressed or extra virgin, meaning the oil has not been treated with chemicals or altered by temperature, so the nutrients are still intact. Walnut oil is considered to be one of the best nut sources of heart healthy omega-3 fatty acids. It's a little bit more expensive, but has a rich nutty flavor, best used in dressings or on veggies. Grapeseed is a versatile oil full of anti-inflammatory antioxidants and vitamin E. It has a neutral flavor that mixes well with herbs and spices. It's a good choice for cooking over high heat. That also goes for peanut oil. You can use it to saute or stir fry. Sesame oil is essential to Asian cooking. It's packed with flavor, including toasted or untoasted varieties. It is best for lower temperature cooking and dressings. Avocado oil is full of monounsaturated fats, nearly 70%, with a smooth, nutty taste. It has a little higher price tag, but year-long shelf life. And finally, flaxseed oil. It's full of omega-3s and 6s and might also help ease stomach issues, but it only keeps for two to three months in the refrigerator, so keep that in mind. For more ways to make mom's life easier, check out momseveryday.com. For these tips and more, go to WKYT.com, click on Moms Every Day. Right there, you'll find the latest news and the weather is well. Of course, this is a first alert severe weather day, so we're really going to be keeping an eye over the next a little bit. 447 is the time, and it wins the morning. Well, Donald Trump grabbed another victory in Nevada last night. With three in a row, the GOP frontrunner is surging into Super Tuesday. 
GOP frontrunner Donald Trump celebrating another big win this morning after being declared the winner of the Nevada caucuses last night. The caucuses ended at midnight Eastern time, but it took some time for the votes to be calculated. Not long after, multiple news outlets were giving Trump the win, and finally it was official. It is now his third victory in a row after wins in New Hampshire and South Carolina. A lot is riding on who takes second place, which could provide some momentum heading into Super Tuesday next week. While voters have not positively identified a second place finisher, Senators Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio remain tightly close in the results that are still pouring in this morning. Well, at least three people are dead. Many more injured after a reported tornado swept through Louisiana, Mississippi, and Florida yesterday. Kenneth Gregg has the latest on the severe weather. Two people were killed and more than 30 others hurt after a reported tornado tore through this RV park in Convent, Louisiana. The storm flipped and mangled dozens of trailers and knocked down trees. It is, it is a jumbled mess. The, these, uh, these, these travel trailers were picked up. Uh, moved a considerable distance and, and, and really blown apart, torn apart. Rescuers were searching for people trapped or wounded. The sheriff says many residents were home when the storm hit. Ryan Cordish lives next door to the Sugar Hill RV park. He says his family hid in their bathroom for safety. I got in the bathtub with my dog and they were praying and I was crying and I was so scared. I mean, the house would not stop shaking. At least 20 homes were destroyed in nearby Assumption Parish. There's structural damage down trees and power lines in La Plaza near New Orleans. The wind picked up, and before you know it, debris was all over, flying everywhere. It sounded like a just bomb hitting the house. The storm continued to Florida's panhandle, bringing heavy rains and causing damage to some buildings in Pensacola. Forecasters say the storm system will continue to affect the East Coast Wednesday. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Atlanta. Well, more than a dozen school systems in Georgia have already canceled classes in anticipation of bad weather overnight and today. The CDC is investigating more than a dozen new cases of Zika virus possibly spread through sex. The cases involve men who visited areas affected by the outbreak and may have infected their female partners. Health officials say the virus remains in the blood for about a week, but it can stay in semen for much longer. Good to have you along on WKYT. 4.53 is the time, and coming up, a look at some of the news stories that we're working on for you this morning. We'll also have another look at your morning forecast. Hey, good morning. It's 4.56 on WKYT. We're sure glad you're with us on this Wednesday morning. Let's take a look right now at some of the stories we're working on for you. New this morning, police have made an arrest following a deadly shooting outside of a Lexington strip club. Police say 24-year-old Clarence Taylor is now charged with murder. Police say Taylor shot 23-year-old Laraz Mitchell outside Camelot East on Richmond Road last Friday. Mitchell later died at a hospital. We'll have more on this case coming up in our newscast here in a few minutes starting at 5. UK Health says they'll host a vaccination clinic today to help protect people on campus from the mumps virus. In just the last week, they've confirmed at least three mumps cases on UK's campus. By offering vaccines to students and staff this afternoon, the university hopes to prevent further cases. More on how students can get that vaccine today coming up in a brand new hour of WKYT this morning. Micah says we can expect a rain and then some snow and lots of wind. So let's check in with him. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty active system. Now, this isn't a major storm system that we're talking about. But it's just enough to cause some problems across the region. You see widespread rain, obviously. Some embedded heavier bouts right across the BG Parkway and also make your way from Lexington to Frankfurt, Frankfurt all the way to Louisville. So right across 64. We're seeing that now. That's heading northbound. And what's going to happen here in the next two to four hours, I'd say anywhere from 7 to 10, 7 to 9 is when you can expect a few rumbles of thunder as this warm front gets a little bit close to us. Uh, we're going to be talking about that. What you can expect out of those thunderstorms, maybe a small chance at a severe weather threat. Also, these gusty winds, also the snow. We got a lot to talk about with this system. We'll talk all about that coming up with another two hours. WKYT News.